Well, it's about that time of year and uh, it's getting a little chilly out there and really it's time to take off the, the ball cap and put on the snow cap. Hopefully you got yourself a good works tractor snow cap. Today we're going to talk about tractor snow removal tips, okay? And so it's a good time of year for that. People are ordering snow pushers like crazy, snow blowers are starting to fly off the shelves too. And so uh, now's the time to start thinking about that and prepping and uh, if you haven't done so already, get to it soon. You know, we're, they're talking about huge snowfalls that they've had already out in the mountains out west. You know, potential snow in Minnesota, all over the place. And so it's coming sooner than you think. And so here we go. Welcome to Good Works Tractors. From snow to mow, Good Works Tractors is the place to go. Shop goodworkstractors.com, subscribe to our channel below, like our Facebook page, and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about here is your loader joystick and the float function that it includes, okay? This is essentially standard equipment with any tractor that's out there, and you're gonna use this whether you have uh, something on your loader, if it's gonna be the, the bucket itself, if it's gonna be a snow pusher or a loader mounted plow blade, this could be a frame mounted snow plow or frame mounted snow blower even, okay? And so this is gonna be helpful for any of those types of tools. And what you wanna do is uh, when the tractor is on, this would normally be pushing down. This would be pushing down on the bucket like it's driving it into the ground. And so what you do is you go beyond that like so, okay? And you can see it stayed up in this position here. And what this is, is this is called a float function, okay? And so this is going to relieve, it's going to eliminate that down pressure that's being applied hydraulically. It's going to bypass that and allow just the weight of the implement and the, the loader, the bucket, the snow blade, whatever it is that's on there, just gravity doing its thing with the weight of the implement, uh, just sitting on the ground. It's gonna follow the contour of the surface that you're plowing or clearing instead of driving down into it. What that's gonna do, it's going to put less wear on the equipment you're plowing with. It's going to save the surface that you're plowing or that you're clearing, okay? And so think about it. If you're pushing down into that surface, yeah, you're gonna get a really clean scrape uh, of the surface and get that packed snow and ice off of there, but you're also gonna potentially sacrifice whatever material, whether it's stone or asphalt or concrete or whatever it is underneath there, you could potentially damage and, and are a lot more likely to damage. Additionally, you're going to put more wear on your machine and on your implement, okay? More wear on the cutting edge, perhaps more wear on the cylinders, more uh, likelihood for damage if you catch something and it doesn't uh, release like it should. And so there's just a greater chance of damage all around. And so it's not that you can't use down pressure, you just need to be smart about doing it. And that's where the float function comes into play. It's going to allow you to just follow that contour of the ground without driving down into it. And so those little bumps and and ripples that you might have in your uh, uneven surface, it's gonna be a lot less likely to damage those and it's just gonna kinda skim along the surface. One of the biggest things you can do though is take it slow when you're removing snow. Is that a rhyme? Take it slow when you're removing snow. That's kinda easy to remember, right? But uh, that's what you wanna do. It, it is not a, you know, if you're doing this commercially, sure, you gotta hustle along, but that's when accidents happen and damage occurs and so if you can, maintain a slow pace, you know, being your low range on your tractor, medium at the, at the very highest range, you know, but uh, preferably low range, and you're gonna be under control at all times. Um, you know, when you're plowing, it, take a look at your manuals too. A lot of them will tell you to be in low range or not to exceed a certain uh, miles per hour if your tractor tells you that, like five miles per hour or whatever it might be, but go slow, it's gonna be a lot safer for you, uh, for the equipment, for whatever you're plowing. It's safety is really in abundance. If you take a look, there's been some really bad things that have happened to folks that uh, have been going too fast or perhaps using their equipment improperly for clearing snow, whether that's uh, breaking a wrist or breaking an arm or getting ejected off of their tractor because it stopped and suddenly jarred them and, and they went flying and the tractor stayed put. And so, uh, not saying that to scare you, but just saying that to use an abundance of caution and not to get out of control with your tractor. Okay, next up, let's talk about replaceable areas here on your snow removal attachment, okay? And so this is an old snowblower right here. This is from the early 2000s, okay? So really, it's not in that bad a condition here. But uh, this is a type of piece of equipment that you would look for that you want to potentially see if maybe the skid shoes have uh, worn down, which these ones are in, in really good shape. Uh, would, I would guess that these had been replaced at some point. This cutting bar along the bottom of most snowblowers is going to be replaceable okay and so a lot of them are even reversible where you can flip them around 
a little bit of a closer look there. And it's got some wear. You can kind of see that wear that's along that edge there. Okay, but uh, that's okay. That's what it's designed to do, all right? And so might be able to flip this one around. This one is actually pretty straight, even though it does have wear. If you can take a look in the corner. Oh, where's that corner there? You can see the corner there is pretty straight too, okay? So, but areas like that are gonna have uh, wear, but they're gonna be replaceable, and they're replaceable for a reason. Snowblower like this, you've got a shear pin on this side here. You can see it right there going through both sides, and you're gonna have a, another one on the other side as well, which you can see right here, all right? And now a little piece of advice, if you didn't know, or a little tip, I should say, is that uh, most of these John Deere snowblowers are gonna have a little slot right here, or a little location where you're gonna have extra shear pins or shear bolts stored right there because it is common and you hit things and you get they get jammed up and whatever else and so yeah this is a bit of an older snow blower i took it in on trade on a snow pusher actually but kind of gives you an idea there of general areas that you might need to replace and want to take a look at before the season starts if we take a look at a newer john deere snow blower like this one here you can see the difference in the cutting edge and how it has a, a decent amount more life left in it that black edge running across the bottom down there now this particular unit here has these nylon or plastic of some kind skid shoes on it, which are uh, an option that uh, either John Deere or some aftermarket company offers. And you're still gonna have shear bolts on either end, here and over here, and then, uh, oh, I forgot, there's also a shear bolt that's tucked back there as well. So um, just a good way to protect your equipment. Make sure you get it all greased up too on the other fittings. You know, certain, um, certain items are gonna have more grease fittings than others. Some aren't gonna require grease at all. So we can take a look here at snow pushers and see that they too are gonna have replaceable areas, okay? And so you're gonna have these skid runners on either end, these skid shoes. You can see the, the long black uh, bar going on all the way back there and same thing over there. And you'll also have this reversible, replaceable rubber cutting edge along here in the middle, okay? And so that's a very, Heavy duty thick piece of rubber there, it'll last a long time, but you can flip it over as you start to run out of life on one side. Uh, and they also do make a steel edge, which this is the first used HLA I've ever had. Um, customer bought it last year, ended up moving and selling their tractor and asked if I would buy it back, and I said sure. So you can see what one of these looks like after a year of use. They hold up very well, you can kind of see the steel edge right here. You know, now this is being used residentially, okay. So not a ton of wear like it would be commercially, but you can see these wear very well. Give you a little close up there, maybe another angle over here. And take a look at the skid shoe as well. Okay, you can see these. These are gonna last you a long time before you're gonna have to replace them, but do your checks now, you never know. Now, if you choose to use your loader bucket, I highly advise against that. Very easy to damage your driveway, very easy and likely to damage your bucket. Do yourself a favor, get yourself a bolt-on cutting edge of some kind, okay? This is a bucket edge right here, okay? But then this is a bolt-on edge, and so if anything, you're going to sacrifice that extra edge on there instead of the much more expensive bucket that you have. Get out there and mark your drive, mark your lot, take a look for those hidden objects, put a stake by those two. You think you remember all this stuff and then winter time comes along and it covers it up in snow, buries it, those curb edges and everything else. And come springtime, you take a look around, you see a big pile of stuff that's in a snow pile that you, that you pushed around and uh, it wasn't supposed to be there. So if you wanna protect your sprinkler heads, protect your landscaping, other things like that, take a little bit of time and mark your drive, mark your sidewalks, mark whatever it is, anything that you don't want to get smoked by a, a plow or a snowblower or anything else, and go ahead and do that now. You know, so this doesn't really apply to tractors per se and tractor removal snow tips, but it's just how to be more comfortable. And if you're on an open station tractor like I've been for years and years and years, it gets a little chilly at times. And so one of the ways that I've seen some other folks in, in snow removal videos on YouTube staying maybe slightly more comfortable is with a heated seat. And so it appears you can get those on Amazon on uh, several different varieties and they will just plug into the 12 volt the 12 volt convenience outlet that's on your tractor. And so you can just get a heated seat pad that just fits right on over top of the tractor seat that you have here, plug it into that convenience outlet and makes it a little bit more comfortable for you. So you wanna let these diesel engines warm up in the winter time, okay? And so fire that sucker up, put it a little bit above the uh, idle position there and then open your garage door or your shop door and, 
and let that bad boy just warm up for a little while. Give it five, 10 minutes. Let that temperature gauge needle come off the bottom and start rising. Gonna be a lot better for the seals and the fluids and your uh, hydraulic system and your engine, everything else before you start putting it under a heavy load, all right? So pick the right edge for you, okay? And now this applies more to uh, snow pusher users and snow plow users than it does uh, snow blower users, but uh, things when you're gonna have a, a long edge that's primarily the scraping portion of the, the implement that's making contact here, you can see this is a rubber a real thick rubber edge right down here and I'm selling a ton of these rubber edges on the snow pushers for instance but uh, you can also get steel edges here okay and so the steel is gonna scrape cleaner all right if you have that packed snow and, and kind of icy surface there's no doubt about it you get a steel edge on there and it's gonna cut it's gonna cut right through that stuff okay a lot better than rubber will and so you got to pick your poison all right I mean the rubber is gonna protect your drive surfaces especially those paved surfaces like asphalt and concrete and bricks and things like that okay but it's not going to pick that uh, pack snow and ice off of the surface nearly as well so you got to do your diligence to try to get out there before it's snowing or before you've driven on it i should say and clear that snow off of there before you drive on it and pack it down um, with the steel edge you can get a, get away with more of that you also have some uh, adjustable skid shoes there too so you are able to if you need to adjust those skid shoes down and that way you have a little gap underneath there uh, so your your blades not making complete contact if you are uh, plowing a, a gravel drive and you don't want to spit gravel all over your um, all over your lawn and get it off your drive so you do have that option there to to be able to adjust those skid shoes with the steel edge and that applies to a, a plow blade and even with a snowblower okay so moving snow is really about traction and yeah four-wheel drive does help that but uh, oftentimes you need to add something additional, like you need to add ballast weight or tire chains, something along on the backside there to get some additional traction. And so if you have another implement hanging around, like a box blade or a, a land plane, something like that, that can be good, as long as you have enough space, you don't have to worry about it. You know, I use a, uh, a ballast box a lot of the time when I'm plowing snow, gonna add a ton of rear weight on there also. Um, I've also loaded these tires. I just got these loaded tires loaded today, actually. and so. I'm going to use this one here at my shop to, to plow this year. And not that I necessarily was going to have a lot of issue with um, moving snow with a tractor this heavy anyways, but uh, I am making sure that I'm getting prepared to handle the snow in the wintertime. And so uh, between the loaded tires here, you can get ballast weight in the back, you can get wheel weights, you can get tire chains, even rubber tire chains for the smaller tractors like the 1025s and so on. Do yourself a favor, if you're questioning whether or not you'd be able to handle the snow, or if you'll just be stuck there spinning your wheels, get the extra weight, get the extra traction that you need because push and snow really is all about weight. Weight equals traction. One of the other things you wanna check is your battery, okay? And so if you think it's pretty old or if you've had a little bit of trouble with it in the summertime, uh, let me tell you, it's gonna be tenfold worse in the wintertime. And so it could very well be time to replace your battery. And uh, last thing you want, is for it to be a winter snowstorm, a driveway full of snow, and you have a dead battery that you can't get started. And so I tell you, even in here, it's not heated in here, but it stays um, around freezing, probably a little bit above freezing in the winter time. And uh, I have a handful of batteries that go dead in here that I have to replace, which are perfectly fine in the summer months, but when winter time comes along, I'll tell you what, that's when uh, those battery problems start to creep up. Make a plan for where you're gonna put that snow, okay? And that means both the location in your yard or your business or whatever it might be, but also how far back, if you're gonna be using a plow or a pusher where you have big piles of snow that you're gonna to need to store, or if it's a snow blower, you're just gonna be blowing it all over the place, that's not as much of a concern. But have that game plan ahead of time and go into the season knowing that. You never know what each winter is gonna be like, and sometimes you get a lot of snow, sometimes you don't. But I'll tell you, after that big pile of snow gets two feet off the drive, and then it kind of melts down and then freezes again, it's gonna be really hard to move around and get back further. And so start by pushing that snow way back, a lot further than you think you're gonna to need to. And uh, you're gonna thank yourself later in the season because once that big old slushy pile freezes up, it is really hard to move, okay? And it's not that it can't be done, but make life easier on yourself and start uh, more conservatively by pushing that snow way back there. So here at my shop this winter, I'm already kind of doing my game planning and trying to figure out where I'm going to put my snow. I got a pretty tight yard out here and I use most of it for tractor and trailer and implement storage. And uh, so I'm trying to see if I can move some trash cans out of here, 
trying to see if I can get this uh, trailer sold off that's not mine down here and free up some more space. Just trying to take care of these things while I still have maybe a month or so, maybe six weeks, who knows, before uh, the big snows really come. But I wanna try to take care of that now instead of having to deal with it and figure out where to put all the snow. Because I'll tell you before, I've had it 15, 20 feet out from the walls. That's just huge piles and I just don't know what to even do with it. And it really cramps the space that I have down here and it's just a whole other problem to deal with. So there's a lot of choices out there for snow removal and I really don't want to get into that too much in this video other than just mentioning what they are, which are your snow blowers, both front and rear. So this is a front mount snow blower here. This is a rear mount snow blower. You do have your snow pushers, which are that whole row of equipment over there. You can use your bucket, of course. You can use a plow blade. You can use edge tamers. There's a lot of different things that you can use uh, for snow removal, but figure out what your plan is going to be before the winter comes. That way you're not sitting there in the middle of winter wondering what you're going to do. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. You know, I've created this whole channel uh, really just to help my customers. You know, I do get asked a lot of questions. Um, I do have a large portion of my customer base that are new tractor owners. It's, it's something that's brand new to them. And um, I don't want to make it seem like I know everything because I am far away from knowing everything, but I do have a lot of trial and error and being involved in this business for as long as I've been, I've been able to pick up and hopefully retain a lot of helpful information um, that, you know, you're always going to have different opinions on how to do something, no matter what it is. Uh, it, it just really doesn't matter. But a little bit of it is trial and error. You just get to figure that out on your own. But uh, keep in mind that you know, these tractors are pretty tough machines um, all around. You know, it is relatively hard to hurt a tractor. I've said it before, but it can be a lot easier to hurt something that you're using around the tractor. You know, whether it's your garage, whether it's your drive, whether it's, uh, you know, landscaping or whatever else it might be. And so just snow removal is no exception is what I'm saying. It's uh, a lot of hidden things that are out there. Um, it can be very easy to um, get yourself into trouble. And so think about it ahead of time, especially if you're on any kind of an incline. You know, I, I have a huge icy slope on my drive at home. I don't have a huge area to plow at home, but it's very challenging. And even if I get a half inch or an inch of snow, I need to get out there and get out there and remove that snow. Otherwise, if it packs down at all, it'll turn into a sheet of ice. We've had uh, more than one vehicle spin out in our driveway and it's, it's just a, a real fiasco at times. And so those are the kind of things that you figure out as you go through it. Um, I found that R4 tires without weight in the back, sometimes when it gets really slippery on that uh, ice covered concrete can be a very um, troubling thing to get back up my drive without having some momentum from the very bottom. And so that additional ballast weight in the back can, can help a lot. You know, I'm gonna be pushing downhill most of the time on my drive uh, just because it's a lot more easier to do that way. But then again, I have to find that space to store all that snow that I'm constantly pushing down versus if I pushed it up the drive, I'd have a lot more space behind as well and multiple storage areas for the snow. So it's all those kind of things that you just figure out as you go through the process. So thanks so much for watching. If you wouldn't mind, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my Facebook page. We do ship tractors and attachments all over the country. We do it on a regular basis. I am very happy to help uh, answer any questions that you have along the way as you get closer to a purchase. If you've already got a tractor and attachment, well, thank you for watching and stopping by. And uh, maybe you can share it with your friends and family and anybody interested. So we'll see you on the next one. Take care.